As early as 1832, our mail once traveled largely by our nation's railroads. By 1930, more than 10,000 trains moved mail. Though seeing an almost complete end in the 60s and 70s due to planes and postal codes, the railmail service saw a resurgence in the 80s and 90s via Amtrak. And while mail formally stopped being carried by rail in 2004, the rich history involved lives on. Today, we're going back into the mid-20th century and delving into that rich history in hopes of discovering that there were more than just tracks to be followed. The job of a railway postal clerk was a distinguished but very difficult job to acquire. Applicants had to go through rigorous examinations that allowed for very little error. As a result, one can only imagine the amount of preparation one needed in order to become a railway postal clerk. Make up little stories, you know, and that, that little story would help you a lot. Use all them names in that town went to a certain place, you know. Every day. <laughs> it was little, the little cards, I don't know if you've seen the little cards that everybody had. You could, when you was sitting in the train station waiting to, to go to work or after you, you know, was waiting to get up, go home or anything else, you would be sitting there studying those cards. And like I said, 20, uh, two, tw twice a year, you had to go to Chicago and take your exam and you had to get 95 out of 100 and they would give you 100 cards at random. In other words, and I had Texas, which was in three parts, Illinois was in two, Michigan and Indiana, and uh, I had Arkansas, so that was all of my states that I had to learn. And you had to go to Chicago twice a year and get 95 out of 100 or you didn't keep your job. Basically, you just had to memorize them, or I would associate it with a map with it and look at the town and on the map and, and associate wh what location it was at. When not going north to south or east to west across our nation, these men basked in their family life and the days off. Though their schedule demanded often numerous days of consistent and rigorous work, it also afforded a number of days off for men to relax back at home, wherever home was. Well, I have one son, and he was very small at that time. Um, and that left, the, when I was gone, that left the wife pretty well in charge of everything. And it seemed like either one, one of them was always getting sick when I was due for me to go to work. <laughs> but uh, we lived in Murfreesboro, Illinois at that time. And uh, it, uh, life was good, especially on the days off. <laughs> well, family was a little bit rough at times, especially when we got children, because sometimes you'd be gone for several days, you know, and it was a little bit rough, but then other times you'd be home you know, for a week or so straight, and it worked real good. And like say, being a sub, you really didn't have no set schedule. Or if you're a regular, you worked like six days and off eight. You kind of planned, but, but being a sub, you were kind of always on call. So you may think you had time off, and they may call that day, and you had to go out that night. So it was a little trying at times, but I liked it. Once a clerk, these men soon became entranced in our nation's railroads and the working conditions they fostered ranging from imaginably dirty and stressful conditions to surprisingly clean and enjoyable. The typical railway postal car was enjoyed by all of its inhabitants. It did, however, at times face a bump or two along the way. You worked hard all right, but it, the, the, the conditions were all right for back in them days. You know. We didn't have no air conditioner and stuff like that. We had heat. It was dirty uh, because of uh, all the road dust coming up from the cars. and. And they never, they never really, they cleaned the car out somewhat, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't spotless. Um, yeah, they weren't easy. As you probably heard that before. <laughs> the only thing, the uh, worst part about that run was working 15 hours and 15 minutes a day. That's hard to do. Train, mail car, Derailed going out of there in the nap was towards Cleveland one morning and uh, it turned over and they 
clerk from Indianapolis post office come down and clean it all up. And we had to ride in a, in a baggage car all the way to Cleveland. And uh, most generally, guy, some guys that got the mail up, they sit down and play Penny Annie till mm -hmm. next stop. So I went in the baggage car and uh, there was a wooden box in there about you know, six feet long as was that table. So we sat around that thing, played Penny Annie all the way to Cleveland. We got looking at the label on it with a corpse being shipped to New York. More dirty than tough, the uh, steam engines had not been gone that long when I came out. The dust on the railroad tracks were still was still there. This uh, movement of the train kicked it up. If you did the nonstop local where you had to stick your head out the door, you you ended up with a black face. I mean it, but uh, all in all, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. The job these men held was not one short of pride. With the termination of the railway service in the 70s, these men and countless others were forced to walk away, deeply saddened for having to give up their enjoyable and meaningful work as railway postal clerks. Well, it started out as rumors, and it come up pretty quick, kind of sudden. So, uh, you kind of got the idea, you know, the railroad wanted to get out of the passenger business, and the post office wanted to put the mail on the airplane, and that's what they did. Scuttlebutt had already come out, you know, that they were decreasing, but when I finally learned that uh, my job was the next one to go, it was by letter from the central office, and uh, it was very short and firm. Your job has been deleted. You, there are two vacancies in Carbondale and elsewhere, but of course I, I took the Carbondale positions. I found out in April, I believe it was in 1967, that uh, my job was being eliminated. And the uh, last trip I made was on September the 9th, 1967. And that was a very disappointing day. It was uh, nice that you could help and uh, accomplish something at the end of the day. You were always proud at the end of the day that you had completed what they put before you to do and realized that you had moved the mail faster than it could move any other way. Thank you for joining us today on Rail Mail, Tales of Railway Postal.